ओम ज्ञानतिरंधस्यानंजन शलाखय चक्षुर्मीतना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदस्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो हियर इन दिस वर्स Brahma ji is speaking to Swayam Bhuva Manu that whatever activities Swayam Bhuva Manu should carry out, it should be certainly for the pleasure of Janardana. Should be for the pleasure of Supreme Personality of Godhead. So very important guidance is given. that how to execute devotional service to the lord the most essential principle of executing devotional service is whether with that service janardana the supreme lord is satisfied that is the most important principle brahma ji is teaching similarly we all should also understand this very important fact that following in the lines of brahma ji swayam bhuva manu all these great personalities we should also learn this most important fact that our devotional service is considered to be in perfectional stage to the extent the supreme personality of godhead is satisfied with our activities here we are seeing brahma ji is saying janardana yagna lingo the supreme personality of godhead who is called as janardana who is he yagna lingo in that form as supreme personality of godhead he accepts everybody's sacrifices so sacrifice is done by our senses with our mind with our intelligence with our self so when we sacrifice when we do the activities to satisfy the supreme personality of godhead that is the most important attribute of our devotional service so the supreme lord janardana he accepts all kinds of results of our sacrifices and if he is not satisfied ye sham na tushto bhagwan then what happen suppose we are carrying out all our different activities we are carrying out now who is the enjoyer of those activities actually the supreme lord is the enjoyer he is the one who accepts yagna lingo because he is the one in this form as janardana he accepts all our results of our activities so let us say he accepts the results of our our activities but the result is such that the lord is not satisfied with those results then we should understand it is all failure whatever activities we have performed 
is utter failure. Tesham shramohi aparthaya. Aparthaya means without profit. Labor without profit. So, Yagnalinga, the Supreme Lord as Janardana, he accepts the results of our activities and with those results, with those activities, if the Lord is not satisfied, Natushto Bhagavan, then Tesham Shramohi Aparthaya, then all our activities are useless. It is only Shrama without profit. Why? Because Yadatma, he is the ultimate self. He is the ultimate self. So Prabhupada translates here, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Janardana, Lord Krishna, is the form to accept all the results of sacrifice. If he is not satisfied, then one's labor for advancement is futile. He is the ultimate self. And therefore, one who does not satisfy him certainly neglects his own interest. Yadatma nadrataha svayam. So that person does not know his real self interest if he does not satisfy the Supreme Lord with all his activities. So, some very important points Prabhupada is saying, which we will try to understand. The Lord, first of all, deputed Brahmaji to carry out his orders. The Supreme Lord has a plan to create this material world, this material creation is a plan of the Lord. Brahma is deputed to carry out these universal affairs. He is the head of these universal affairs of this universe. Then, he in turn is deputing here Manu to carry out his orders. So this is very essential. The orders the Supreme Lord gave to Brahma, Brahma in turn is ordering his son, Swayam Bhuva Manu, to carry out those orders. So the order of the Lord is also descending in Parampara. And anyone in Parampara, if he carries out the order, we should understand actually we are carrying out the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is very essential to understand. Even if your authority is giving you certain order, certain services, when we are carrying out those orders, we should understand it is linked in the Parampara. Carrying out the order of the spiritual master is carrying out the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If we carry out the order of the spiritual master, the Lord is satisfied. And thus that means, if we carry out the orders of the spiritual master, whatever activities we do to carry out the order of the spiritual master, the Lord will be satisfied. Because now we are seeing, what is the most important principle? Satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. So how do we know the Lord is satisfied with my activities? Sometimes we wonder, whatever activities we are doing, how the Supreme Lord is satisfied, how do we know? Isn't it? The Lord is not directly reciprocating that I am very satisfied with you. With Arjuna, yes, the Lord said I am not satisfied with you if you don't fight. Isn't it? But how do we understand? So, here we are seeing 
Brahmaji is convincing Manu that by carrying out my order, you are actually carrying out the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because I am engaged by the Supreme Lord for this purpose of creation. So when you are carrying out those orders, the Lord is satisfied. So this is very essential to understand. We should never think that whatever activities, services we are carrying out, it is not linked to the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord is satisfied in Guru Parampara. So this is one very essential point which Prabhupada is making here. Brahma knows how to satisfy the Lord. Similarly, persons engaged in the line of Brahma's plan of activities also know how to satisfy the Lord. So those who are engaged in the line of Brahma, in the disciplic line of Brahma, also knows how to satisfy the Supreme Personality of God. With this respect, there is a very interesting uh, verse which comes later on in the third canto, uh, 24th chapter, where again Brahmaji is telling to Kardama Muni. Kardama Muni also similarly satisfied. He also executed plans of progeny, of creating progeny of uh, whatever Brahmaji had given him, the task of increasing the progeny. And he accepted Devhuti. And then in the womb of Kardama and Devhuti, Lord Kapila, he appeared, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, personally appeared in the womb of Devahuti. We know that. Brahmaji came, all other devatas came and they were all glorifying you know, the Supreme Lord in the womb. They were offering their prayers to Lord Kapila in the womb. At that time, Brahmaji uh, glorifies Kardama Muni for his service attitude. It's very essential. How Kardama carried out the orders of Brahma. What was his attitude when he carried out? This is also very important. Because sometimes we may carry out the orders of the spiritual master very indifferently, a lot of hesitations, a lot of doubts in our mind. My guru has ordered this. If I execute this, whether the Lord will be pleased with me? Isn't it? So we may have a lot of doubts. So what should be the mentality of our service when we carry out? It is called service attitude. What should be our attitude when we carry out the services is very important. So this is a verse which Brahmaji is saying to Kardama Muni. <clears throat> Brahma Uvacha Tvayame apachiti tata kalpita nirvyali kataha yanme sanjangre vakyam bhavan manada manayam. So, Prabhupada translates it very nicely. My dear son Kardama. Since you have completely accepted my instructions without duplicity, showing them proper respect, you have worshipped me properly. Whatever instructions you took from me, you have carried out and thereby you have honoured me. You see? So first very important instruction Brahmaji is giving to Kardama Muni and is glorifying him for his service attitude is carrying out the orders without duplicity. Meaning, completely accepting in toto. This is called without duplicity. Not that having certain doubts in the mind. You see, there should be no doubts in our mind. This is exactly we see what Prabhupada also carried out the orders of his spiritual master in total. This month we are 
you know, celebrating as Prabhupada's voyage on Jaladuta. So when he, when he went on the voyage of Jaladuta, we all understand that how Prabhupada went on the orders of his spiritual master. And in that famous poem which Prabhupada wrote on board of Jaladuta, Prabhupada is very clearly saying that, My dear Lord, if you have brought me here to dance, make me dance. I am just like a puppet, just carrying out the orders. See, to make me success or failure, it is completely up to you. I leave it to you. So, just like Prabhupada carried out the orders of his spiritual master, Prabhupada says, my spiritual master had ordered me, try to convince these English speaking people. So, in order to carry out that order, Prabhupada boarded that Jaladuta for around 38 days, Prabhupada was traveling. And we saw that how Prabhupada is himself explaining, he had two major heart attacks and he was saying that if the third one, you know, after that if it was to come, then probably I would not have survived. So, in spite of taking all those difficulties, what was the reason? Prabhupada had full faith in the orders of his spiritual master. Without duplicity, he was carrying out the orders of his spiritual master, without any doubt. So, in the purport, Prabhupada explains this very nicely. Brahma praises Kardama because... He carried out the orders of the spiritual master in toto without cheating. Completely he carried out the orders of his spiritual master. Not that, yes, I have done and externally we post that I have finished my order, but actually we are cheating the spiritual master or we are cheating, you know, Krishna consciousness. No. Sometimes in our services, you know, that kind of tendency may be there. That uh, I have gone for, let us say, five hours or I have done my services. And practically we are just externally trying to make it appear that I have finished my service. But actually we may be cheating ourselves. So this is, this very important aspect of devotional services without duplicity, in toto, without cheating. So then Prabhupada explains, what is that cheating? Conditioned soul in the material world has the disqualification of cheating. But if one carries out the order of the spiritual master by disciplic succession or the parampara system, he overcomes the four defect. Therefore, knowledge received from the bona fide spiritual master is not cheating. Any other knowledge which is manufactured by the conditioned soul is cheating only. Brahma knew well, Kardama Muni exactly carried out the instruction received from him and he actually honored his spiritual master. To honor the spiritual master means to carry out his instructions word for word. See, this is the name. Not that we screw out some meaning. No, this is not what Prabhupada meant. You know, he meant by this. No. To carry out the orders of the spiritual master, word by word, without cheating, without duplicity, in toto, that is very, very essential. So this is the one qualification, one of the very important attitude while carrying out the service is without duplicity. Next verse, Brahmaji explains further important attitude which uh, Kardama Muni had while carrying out his services. Etavati eva shushrusa kari pitari putrikai badham iti anumanyeta gauravena guror vachaha Sons ought to render service to their father exactly to this extent. One should obey the command of his father or spiritual master with due difference, saying, Yes, sir. You see, 
Prabhupada translates this word from Sanskrit, Badhamiti. Prabhupada translates, accepting. Yes, sir. You see. So, here in the translation it says, even if the son differs in his opinion, his opinion may be different, let us say, because everybody is an individual living entity. So, even though one's opinion may be different, just like Arjuna's opinion was different from Krishna's opinion, from no man later on he became yes man. So, similarly, Prabhupada is translating here, Badhamiti as yes sir. He should carry out the order of the spiritual master with due difference saying yes sir. And then, in the purport, Prabhupada explains this further. Two words in this verse are very important. One word is Pitari, another word is Guru. The son or disciple should accept the words of his spiritual master and father without hesitation. So this is another quality, another important aspect, attitude of devotional service. We should accept the words of the spiritual master without hesitation. Third, whatever the father and the spiritual master orders should be taken without argument. Yes, there should be no instance in which the disciple or the son says, this is not correct, I cannot carry it out. When he says that, he is fallen. So important. So what is the first attitude we saw? What is the first attitude we saw while carrying out the service? Without duplicity, in toto, we should accept. What is the second we saw? Without hesitation, accepting it as, yes sir. And Prabhupada says even third, he further explains that. It also means without argument. Not that we argue with the spiritual master. Prabhupada goes to the point of saying, if he argues and says, this is not correct, he is fallen. The disciple is fallen. See? There should be no instance in which the disciple or the son says, this is not correct, I cannot carry it out. When he says that, he is fallen. And then, Prabhupada further explains, in any case, the order of the spiritual of the father or the order of the spiritual master must be carried out without hesitation with an immediate yes there should be no argument that is real service to the father and to the spiritual master vishwanath chakruti thakur has stated that the order of the spiritual master is the life and soul of the disciple as a man cannot separate his life from his body a disciple cannot separate the order of the spiritual master from his life See, it's like Prabhupada is saying, as a man cannot separate his life from his body, otherwise the body is dead. Till the life is there in the body, the body is alive. The moment you separate life and body, body is only dead. Similarly, the moment the disciple separates the order of his spiritual master, the disciple is as good as dead. He is not alive. So Prabhupada is saying, similarly a disciple cannot separate the order of the spiritual master from his life. If the disciple follows the instruction of the spiritual master in that way, he is sure to become perfect. This is confirmed in the, in the Upanishad. Then Prabhupada further points out, this does not require any great scholarship. To carry out the orders of the spiritual master does not mean one has to be a great scholar. One has to be a great scholar to understand the order of the spiritual master. That is also not required. So Prabhupada further says, One may be materially considered an illiterate man, 
But if he has faith in the spiritual master as well as the supreme personality of Godhead, then the meaning of scriptural revelation is immediately manifested before him. What is the order of the spiritual master? What do the Vedic literatures are saying? That will become manifested. He does not require to be a great scholar to screw out some meaning. That is not required. That we see in the example of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed personally that when he was touring South India, he came across one illiterate Brahmana. The only qualification Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw in the illiterate Brahmana was implicit faith to carry out the order of his spiritual master. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately embraced that Brahmana. The order, the spiritual master had ordered him, you read Bhagavad Gita. So he was illiterate, he did not know how to read. But he was trying to execute that order, trying to read Bhagavad Gita. You see? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately embraced him. Tears were flowing from his eyes. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked him, why tears are flowing from his eyes? So he said, the moment he takes up Bhagavad Gita and he tries to execute that order of his spiritual master of trying to read Bhagavad Gita, immediately the picture of the Lord as Parthasarthi comes in his mind. That how merciful the Lord is, that he is the master, but he has become a chariot driver for his devotee Arjuna. So immediately Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him and said, you have understood the real essence of Bhagavad Gita. You see? So Prabhupada is saying here the same thing. Even if one is an illiterate person, by the mercy of the Lord, by the mercy of the spiritual master, that import of the Vedas, summary of Bhagavad Gita, essence of Bhagavatam, everything will be revealed to such a person. So, this is how one should be willing to render service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead without duplicity, without hesitation, as, you know, yes man, completely in toto, without any arguments with the spiritual master, one should be ready to carry out his services. And that is why here also we are seeing that uh, Brahmaji is telling Swayam Bhuva Manu, that if you carry out my order, what I am giving you, which is coming in the disciplic succession, the Supreme Personality of Godhead will be pleased. And if Supreme Lord is not pleased with your activities, then whatever activities you may be doing, it is simply a profitless activity, whatever you are carrying out. So we will stop with this. Bhagavatam Srila Prabhupada.